Hey guys, welcome back to my new vlog series where I tell you about some of the stuff that happened to me 10 years ago when I studied abroad in Italy. Uh, it was fun times. Anyway, um, last week I told you about Rome and all the cool stuff that happened there, including, um, you know, showing my underwear to people on the street accidentally, and what else? Um, and getting my hand bitten off by a sewer cover. So yeah, lots of fun stuff in that one. Um, today I'm going to be talking about Florence, because Florence is where I lived most of the time that I was there. I was there for a whole month, and um, except for the first few days in Rome and a few days in Venice, I stayed at a host family's house, and um, yeah, in Florence, so it was really cool. Before I left for the trip, they had told me that I was going to be rooming with another girl in the group. But um, once I got there, they were like, ah, well, there's been a change of plans, and you're going to be rooming by yourself. So yeah, that was fun, and she had to room by herself also. I don't know why this happened, but I guess something fell through, and I don't know, they had to make up with it. They had to make up, you know, for whatever had happened. And uh, so I was all by myself. Basically, they dropped us off in the piazza where our school was going to be, where we would be taking classes. And they kind of showed us, you know, this is the building, so you're going to come here tomorrow, and we're all going to meet up and all of that stuff. But first, go meet your families. So um, I headed off by myself. Luckily, the place I was staying was only about two blocks away from the um, the school and everything. Um, the only bad thing is that my <laughs> my luggage had lost a wheel in the Atlanta airport, so I was basically just dragging it through the cobblestone streets of Florence, Italy. So yeah, it's a good thing that it was only about two blocks. Anyway, I got to the street and I could not figure out where the door was because there were like, <laughs> it's so hard to explain. There were two sets of numbers on the doors. So there was like a number two and a number two and a number four and a number four and a number six and a number six. And I had no idea where I was supposed to be. Luckily, there was this elderly couple that came up and helped me out and helped me find where I was supposed to go. So I rung up and they let me in the door and I had to drag my poor one-wheeled suitcase upstairs. Three flights, I believe, of stairs. So that was fun. Um, yeah, but um, I met the people who lived there, the family that I was going to be staying with, and... Um, it was a married couple, Franca and Victor, and Franca's mother, who was named Mirella. So, yeah, um, and a cat. They had a cat also, and the cat's name was Minuka, or something like that. Um, they called it Minu. So, um, yeah, um, the cat never really liked me. I would catch it in my room sometimes, but as soon as I walked in, it would, like, shoot out the door. So, yeah, it was not a very friendly cat, I suppose. Anyway, um, once I got in there, I found out that there were going to be two other people, um, two other students living there for the month, and they were from Kansas State. But, um, they roomed together in a separate room. And my room was really small, but... You know, there was only one of me, so it wasn't that big of a deal. And it had a little teeny tiny um, black and white TV set, which was really cute. And I would watch TV on there sometimes, especially like um, Sunday mornings, because they would show uh, they would show movies, like movies that were supposed to be in English, but dubbed in Italian, so it was usually stuff that I had already seen before, so I would watch those and listen to it in Italian, but still know what was going on because I had already seen it in English. So yeah, um, that was pretty cute. Um, they didn't have air conditioning, of course, because most places in Italy, or at least 10 years ago, I don't know how it is now, but they didn't have 
air conditioning in their homes and things. They would have it in some restaurants. You would see, you know, there would be signs that said that there was air conditioning in the in the restaurant or in the shop or whatever. So, um, yeah, I had to sleep with my window open every night. And the very first night, I slept so terribly because there was a mosquito that just circled around my head and buzzed for like three hours straight until I finally killed it. So that was annoying. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so pretty much always had to have the window open. But when there was a breeze, it was really nice, so it wasn't that big of a deal. So the first day I was there, Franca took me into the kitchen, and she showed me the view from the window in the kitchen, and you could see the campanile, which is like the bell tower at the main cathedral in Florence. And you could just, I mean, I was really close to it. We were probably only about four blocks away from there, so you could see it out the window. It was really cool. Um, I didn't get a picture of it, but, um, yeah, I did get a picture of my room and um, looking out through the window, but it wasn't much of a view from my window. It was basically you could see into other people's windows across the uh, little courtyard or whatever, so that was strange, especially since I always had my window open, but eh, I guess you got used to it. And plus there was a restaurant downstairs, so you could smell food all the time and you could hear like restaurant noises and music and stuff like that. But yeah, um, so that was my window. Woo. So the first like full day that we were there, we had to go to the school. We met up there and we had to take placement tests. So um, basically we had to try to remember all of the Italian that we had already been taught and um, take a test and see which class we were to be placed in. I ended up in the intermediate class, which I guess was okay, even though I had been taking Italian classes for like two years, but I was never really strong in it, I guess. I've never been good at foreign languages. Anyway, um, so I got into the intermediate class, which I guess is good because I wasn't a beginner. <laughs> that would have been really, really awkward. <laughs> Two years and you're still a beginner, yeah. So um, I got placed in my class, and um, the other class was art history, so I didn't have to take a test for that. I just automatically got in because it was art history. I signed up for that specific class. So yeah. Um, Basically, the art history class was we went to a bunch of museums and churches and things like that, and I had to keep a journal and write about all the different things that we saw. And I think yeah, I could choose, like, 20 different things or something like that. I had to have a certain number of entries, and I could choose out of all of the things that we went to and saw while we were there. So it was pretty easy. So um, I lived near a lot of cool places when I was there. Um, right down the street from where I lived was Dante's birthplace, so that was pretty neat. Um, I walked by there and got pictures and stuff. Um, the other way down the street was Orson Michele, which was like the guild, um, the church of the guilds of Florence or something like that, so all of the statues around were um, I forget because it's been a while, but like saints and stuff like that were all around, but then they also had um, little casts of um, people doing different things like building, you know, buildings and making bricks and uh, making windows and stuff like that. So that was pretty cool, and that was like right down the street. Um, another place that was pretty close by was um, Piazza della Signoria which is where um, they have a bunch of statues. There's like this big, uh, I forget what it's called. Um, I can't think of um, what it's called because I haven't taken an art history class in a long time and I know that was a big art history class thing. But there's like a colonnade and everything and there were a bunch of um, different statues that were uh, littered throughout, I guess. And um, I know one of them was uh, the Rape of the Sabine, so um, I got a picture of that. And then also in front of the um, clock tower there, they have a copy of um, Michelangelo's David statue. And the original one is actually in um, 
It's actually in Florence in a museum. Oh. But they have a copy outside the bell tower and everything, so um, you can see that one anytime. But uh, they were doing a bunch of renovations, like, everywhere that I went. So there are so many pictures that I have where it's like there are scaffolding everywhere, and it was really annoying. But um, I did get to see stuff. So, yeah, so that was pretty close. And uh, Ponte Vecchio, which is the big um, bridge across the Arno River, and it's got like a bunch of shops and stuff. That was kind of nearby my house, I guess. Or not my house, but the apartment where I was staying. And um, yeah, so I got to see all those places. So one of the first days that I was there, I just kind of walked around and just looked at a bunch of stuff. And I was going to go um, climb the dome of the cathedral, but uh, I happened to come across some of the other girls from the group and they were all going to Fiesole which is a city that's like on top of the hill close to um, Florence and so we all took the bus and we went there and we hung out there all day and we ate lunch there and we got a picture of there's a picture of four of us that um, <laughs> that the waiter took but uh, I've got the picture anyway and excuse my hair because it looked horrible. Every single picture that I have of myself, my hair looked completely awful. And um, I like to say that it's just because I was growing my hair out to have it cut to donate. But um, it's probably just that I didn't care because I didn't care. Anyway, so bad hair. Beautiful city. <laughs> So for the art history class, we went to several different places, um, one of which was Santa Croce, which is the church where Michelangelo, um, Dante, uh, Galileo, and Machiavelli are all buried, so that was pretty interesting. We got to see their tombs and stuff, and um, yeah, there was a lot of stuff about Dante in Florence, because that's where he was born and where he lived, and actually the school that we went to was called Cleta. I always had so much trouble saying this, so I would just say Cleta and people were okay with it because it actually means Centro Linguistico Italiano Dante Alighieri, which is really hard to say. I still have trouble saying it, but uh, yeah, that's what it was. Um, so it's basically like uh, the Dante Alighieri um, Center for the Italian Language or something like that. Anyway. <laughs> So yeah, there's a lot of uh, Dante stuff in Florence, and a lot of Michelangelo stuff, and, you know, they were they were very big in Florence. Another place that I went, and this was not actually for my art history class, but um, another place I went was the Boboli Gardens, and I took lots of pictures of the stuff there. It was really pretty. There were, like, all these roses in bloom, and all these beautiful flowers and statues, and it was really cool. And, um... I just went with two other girls in the group and we just walked around and it was incredibly hot so we were like chugging water it was crazy but uh yeah it was really fun though it was really really nice there um I'm gonna try and keep this short because I'm gonna break this into two parts so I'm only gonna tell you two more stories about Florence right now because I want to try and keep this you know under 18 minutes last week's was terrible. So, um, the other two stories. The first is that I didn't really hang around with a lot of the people in my group. I think it's just the fact that I was kind of off by myself, so I didn't really have anybody to hang out with all the time. But um, one of the people I did hang out with was um, one of my friends, or we became friends during the trip, and his name was Cameron. And we went to see Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban in Italian, which was so cool because I had already read the book and he had read the book. So we were like really big fans of the series already. And then we went to see the movie together and we had a blast. It was so much fun. About a week after that, everybody got together and we went one night at like, it was really, it was like 10 o'clock at night or something. And we all went together and we watched it again, but this time it was in, um, was, I'm trying to think if it was in Italian with English subtitles or if it was in English with Italian subtitles. I'm going to have to look that up. Yeah, it was in English with Italian subtitles. That makes more sense. Anyway, hey, um, so I got to see Harry Potter in Italian and in English, both in Italy, which was really awesome. So um, the other story that I wanted to say is that 
I, um, I would talk to my mom a lot online, because this was back in the days when AOL Instant Messenger was, like, you know, the go-to instant messenger. And, um, so I had it, and I would talk to my mom, I would chat to my mom every morning, or pretty much every morning, and it turns out that my grandmother had, um, been chatting to someone she thought was me, but it wasn't. It wasn't me at all, because she had taken my, um, school email address and used that as for, um, she thought that that was the same as my AOL Instant Messenger um, screen name, which it wasn't. So she was talking to some complete stranger, and, you know, she recorded the message, or she um, she saved the messages that this person was sending to her, the imposter, and it was really funny because she thought, she really thought it was me, and the person was acting like they knew who she was and everything, and was trying to go along with the story, but then she kind of started becoming suspicious when the person started talking about sneaking out and going to have sex with their drug dealer. And then <laughs> they called her Biatch. And that kind of clued her in that it wasn't me she was talking to. <laughs> so that was really funny. There was that whole mishap. But um, yeah, that happened because she wanted to talk to me while I was in Italy, which is a really sweet grandmotherly thing to do. But then that happened. I've always loved that story always makes me laugh. So, uh, yeah, I guess that's all for now, because I want to keep this kind of short, like I said, and, uh, next time I think I will probably talk about some of the, um, some of the, like, day trips that I took, and then after that I will talk about Venice, and then I will do another Florence, um, part, and that will be it, so <laughs> it's gonna take a while, but, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.